thought of something to get her out of the house. Yes. With a little luck, I'll kill two birds with one stone. Or one knife. <laughs> Everything is all arranged. Why don't you tell me about it? Everyone else is out of the house now. What about Peter? He's asleep. The doctor gave him a sedative when he came home. And Bridget? She'll be our only witness. Perfect. I just checked, and Mr. McKinnon is at home, all alone. Which gives him no alibi. Exactly. Well, I'll be leaving soon. All right. Now, just remember that you have to be standing right here. And I won't forget. The knife will just miss me and hit the painting there. Yes. I'll contact our man as soon as I leave. He's been waiting for my call. Is there something else I should know? No, that's everything. Sir, is it really worth the risk? Of course it's worth it. If Mary gets back. You are taking a very big chance. I'm used to doing that. I just wish that there was some other way. There is no other way, Gomez. Why? I love her. I love her. Miss Gomez said you wanted to see me, sir. Yes, I do. Uh, why don't you sit down? I think we're going to have to uh, talk about some changes of staff. Uh, don't you think it's awfully warm in here? Well, yes, perhaps it is, a bit. I must have set the thermostat too high. I'll just open those doors a bit. Take care of everything. Now, yeah. where were we? It's not serious. She could have been killed. We have to call the police. Okay, I'll tell Bridget as soon as she gets back now. Does it hurt a lot? Call now. No, I don't want to leave you. He might still be out there. What is it, dear? When I saw that knife, and you standing there. I know, I never should have come back. Now, do you want to lie down? No. Call the police. And Mary. No. I need her. The door's open. Yes, I, want, I wanted some air. Grandpa. That's where he was. The guy who tried to kill you, he was out here. running right through there. No, no, what? Scott. I think you were right before. It must have been a deer. What would a guy be doing running away from the house like that? You're scared. And I'm going to get right in the car, all right? Okay. Yeah, bye. Bye. Hello, 
You're very lucky, Reginald. I've always said that. That knife hit the fleshy part of your shoulder. Gauze? Yes, sir. Here we go. And tape? It could have hit a nerve, or severed a muscle, or a major blood vessel. Here you go. A little lower and to the left, and you could have been killed. Oh, grandfather. Dr. Bowden has a flair for the dramatic, Vicky. I prefer not to go to a hospital. I can take care of you right here. Well, what are you going to do? Well, this compress will slow the bleeding down so we can get him upstairs, and then I'm going to clean up the wound and put in a few sutures. Stitches? Will you help me, Bridget? Oh, yes, of course, sir, I will. Yes, here we go, sir. All yeah, right. Excuse me. Yes. This knife, ma'am, I was wondering, do you recognize it? No, that's not from my kitchen. You can check the terrace now, Val. I'm Lieutenant Samuels, Mr. Love. Yes, I remember. I'd uh, like to get Mr. Love upstairs so I can treat him. It's all right, Frank. I'd like to speak with Lieutenant Samuels. You told my man that you opened the terrace doors yourself. That's right. Why? Well, it was warm in the room. Go on. I had just sat down again. I looked out on the terrace and I saw a man out there. That's when Vicky walked in. And you saw him throw the knife? No, I saw him raise his arm. I tried to push Vicky out of the way, and I got hit. It's all my fault. Nonsense. There's someone out there who wants me dead. You saved my life. And I'd do it again. We've got to get this wound taken care of, Reginald. All right, Frank. Uh, Lieutenant Samuels, if there's anything else, please feel free. <clears throat> What's going on? Father? Peter. Why didn't he say anything? Oh, Mr. Peter, come on now. You've got to get back in bed. You know, you haven't been out of the hospital except for a few hours. I want to know what's going on. Somebody threw a knife at Grandpa. A knife? This knife. But why? He thinks somebody wants him dead. I think he may be right. Who? He has a lot of enemies. Michael Hudson. Peter. It could have been Michael Hudson. Michael would never do anything like that. And besides, he's in Chicago, and I can prove it. I still say it could be Michael. Or at least he could hire somebody to do it for him. Michael never would do that. He would never take the risk of hurting me. I am his daughter, and I live in this house, too. If it isn't the Hudson guy, who is it? Who else had a motive? Glad we got here before he did. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not like Pops to be late and stuff. You worried about him? Uh, Vince called me. There's nothing to worry about, except for when I'm going to drop all his food. This place is really jumping. Oh, you're telling me. Honey, I need two draft beers and a club soda with lime. That table is over there. You got it, man. Mary's place. Maisie? Yeah, where are you? I'm still at home. My lousy car won't start. Oh, you are kidding. You just got that out of the shop. <laughs> you just wait till I see that mechanic of mine. I'm gonna tell him what he can do with that new alternator. How are things down there? <laughs> it's, it's busy, honey. Oh, listen, I'm gonna take the bus and get there as soon as I can. This just isn't my day. Oh, uh, Mr. Love. Yes. Hello, Henry. Mr. Love? This man saw someone running away from the terrace. Did you, Henry? Yes, sir. Running like a scared jackrabbit. I want you to hear this description. We might just have a suspect. Vince! Where's Maisie? She's in the kitchen. What happened to you? What didn't happen? My car broke down, I did to the bus. That's a drag. You're telling me. You know the taxes that people pay, you'd think this city have a decent bus line. Well, hello, yeah? Vince. What do you need to be done first? Well, now, just relax for a minute. That's okay. I'm okay. Well, you look like you're about to bust a gusset. What, what took you so long? Just leave me alone, all right? I am not in the mood for answering questions. I better stay away from you, Scott. Why? Because Pops, he's in a real mood. The way I feel about you, not even Vince's moods could break us up. Excuse me, some people are trying to work around here. Guy was stocky, wearing a beat-up old jacket. 
Did you notice anything else? Yeah, he had reddish hair. You sure? Yeah, he ran through one of the floodlights. Sound familiar? Sounds like Vince McKinnon. Yeah, it does. What do you think, Mr. Love? Well, he certainly hates me enough. Enough to kill you? Unfortunately, yes. I have a hard time believing that. He's MJ's old man. You heard Henry. Henry saw him. And he's also the only enemy I have who's capable of murder. Grandfather, what's wrong? It's a little unsettling thinking about. Vince McKinnon came here tonight and tried to kill me. Swimming pools, two indoor. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, this is disgusting. What? Private hot tubs for two. <laughs> disgusting. <Ugh. laughs> and you can even take a side trip to Peking. <laughs> I always wanted to take a slow boat to China. <laughs> yeah. I'll get it, guys. Mm, would you please? Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> He's wanted for questioning. About what? The attempted murder of Reginald Love. You may be way out of line here. You better be careful about hiding a prime suspect. Pops, this isn't even home. Cheryl, would you please let us handle this? But it's not. That's all the information you're getting from us. Not so fast, Winthrop. Show him. We've got a search warrant. Are you out of your mind? seems to be in order. Cass! We've got no choice, Kathleen. Why don't you come in? Do you know where your father is? No, she doesn't. Hiding a suspect is an obstruction of justice. Look, none of us have seen Pops all morning. Pops wouldn't do anything wrong. If you don't believe us, you can ask my sister, MJ. She's a policewoman. I know MJ very well. Look, I'm sorry about all of this. I'm just doing my job. You take the top floor, I'll take the living room. Sure, help yourselves. What's going on? Where on earth could Pops be? He's probably at Mary's place. So I'm gonna go call him. Were the cops calling all over the place? Look, somebody has to get to him before they do. Cheryl, why don't you go over to Mary's place and tell Vince what's going on? Okay. All right? We'll stay here with the cops and try and find out what they've got. Oh, Cheryl, uh, call MJ from the restaurant. She, she probably doesn't know about any of this. Okay, I'll be back as soon as I can. Hurry up. Well, oh, this is crazy. There has to be some mistake. Pops couldn't have done this. He'd have to stand in line. At least half the people in Bay City would love to throw a knife at Reginald. Think, where could Pops be? He should have checked in somewhere by now. Maybe he found out what was going on. Well, if that was the case, he'd be here. Right. Yeah, I guess so. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. I mean, Pops a suspect? Come on! Pops can't even shoot a dart straight, much less throw a knife at somebody. What on these charges? Well, Reggie, baby, who else? You know, he probably stabbed himself in the back for the sheer pleasure of being able to accuse Pops. I wouldn't put it past him. This whole thing seems to have been designed specifically to hurt the McKinnons. That's exactly what I think. Can we sue Reginald for slander? No, not for just pressing charges, no. Look, why don't we just see how they, ha they handle the rest of the investigation and then we can examine our options. You know, except for the fact that good old Reginald probably dreamed this whole thing up, and this could almost be laughable. Find any hot evidence, Lieutenant? Not yet. Lieutenant, don't you think this whole thing has gone far enough? Look, they're just going to take a look around the kitchen and then they're going to leave, okay? They're the ones with the search warrant. I don't know what you think you're going to find in there. Hey, Lieutenant? What have you got? Odd place to keep clothes, don't you think? Put them in the box. No, wait, you can't do that. You have no right to do that. Ted, you're 